Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the Brockton Democratic City Committee, I wish to welcome you to the 15th annual Gene Sullivan Memorial Breakfast. And I, yes, and I must say, we're delighted to have Red, the Honorable Red Sullivan here with us today. Today we celebrate the democratic ideals that bring us all together in fellowship to hear from candidates for elected office and to learn about the topics of the November ballot questions. And we're doing it all in memory of a beloved Democrat, Gene Sullivan. My name is Susan DeCastro. I am the chairman of this year's Sullivan Breakfast Committee. I'm also the current secretary of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. Right now, the city committee is all about change. By May of this year, our leadership was mostly new. And with the challenges that new leadership brings, well, it also brings new enthusiasm, new hopes, and new possibilities. For example, it was very important to our new leaders to reinstitute the awarding of the Paul and Jean Studensky Scholarship. Well, through the kindness and generosity of our city committee members, I'm pleased to report that the scholarship is now fully funded and will be awarded. I ask you to rise as VFW Post Commander James Doherty leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Recite the Pledge of Allegiance with me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you for coming out today. And good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to speak at your breakfast this morning on this solemn day in our country's history. My name is Jim Doherty. I'm the post commander of Brockton Post 1046. We are proud to represent this city as the VFW representatives. I was asked by Michelle Dubois to say a few words. Being the 15th anniversary of the deadly attack on our citizens in New York, Washington, and the plane that went down in Pennsylvania, I believe everyone in this room remembers where you were that morning when you heard the news that airliner full of passengers slammed into the first tower in New York. Then minutes later, a second plane hit Tower 2. The shock was instant to most Americans. The first time since Pearl Harbor that this nation was so severely attacked by a foreign enemy. The destruction was devastating. 2,996 people died on that day. 343 of them were firefighters. More than 6,000 people were injured. The heroism of our first responders was beyond any call of duty. Firefighters and police officers ran into the buildings to save lives of as many people as they could. Many never walked out. As Franklin Roosevelt said about Pearl Harbor, quote, this is a day that will live in infamy. That certainly was a day that will live in infamy. Today we stand here to remember the sad day in our nation's history. Resolve ourselves to never allow another attack on our citizens on American soil. Excuse me. <laughs> our nation must be constantly on guard. We must provide the ultimate support to our first responders, fire, police, and EMS. Make sure they're equipped and armed to combat these terrorist threats. We need to take time to remember all the citizens who lost their lives on that day and the brave heroes that rushed into those buildings in New York, Washington, and the brave passengers who brought down their own plane so that it would not hit any, uh, uh, any buildings in Washington, D.C. We must never forget this day in infamy 
and always pay homage to our lost citizens and our first responders. America owes these brave people our support and always our prayers. God bless America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I present our Democratic City Committee Chair, Steve Kelly. Hey, everyone. I'm glad you all could all make it today. Um, the Sullivan Breakfast Committee, chaired by Sue, did a fantastic job in getting everything here. Can you hear me? Or no? oh. I'm going to lean over, I guess. You know, it really is a... Um, honor for me to be here as chair you know it's like this committee can mean a lot to this city and I really want to work with people on it um, it's sort of a dichot you know I want before we get started we got to take a minute to honor uh, people who have passed away on 9-11 we also need to take a minute to honor Wayne McAllister and Tom Kennedy that meant a lot to this city you know this is sort of a, a um, dichotomy that we're celebrating the 15th anniversary of 9-11 of, uh, and we're also celebrating the 15th Gene Sullivan breakfast. You know, it shows the dichotomy that we're facing this election year. You know, we have uh, Donald Trump running and we got Hillary Clinton running. And it's like here we have a tragedy of epic proportions and we also have a tragedy of ep epic proportions if we aren't successful in electing a Democrat to as president and keep Democrats in office. You know, it's ironic. You know, Hubert Humphrey once said that the moral test of government is how the government treats those that are in the dawn of life, the children, those that are in the twilight of life, the elderly, and those that are in the shadows of life, the sick and needy and handicapped. I'd add in our veterans. I'd add in our first responders because, you know, how well we do as a society in helping these folks out represents the kind of government we got. Well, I worked for DTA for 40 years, and during that time, unfortunately, I worked with too many veterans that needed assistance from our government. You know, and I worked with the elderly, I worked with the poor, and I realized how important it is to have Democrats in office. You know, it makes it much easier for me to work on programs that benefit and empower people when we have a, a Democrat in office. You know, Francis Fox Piven wrote a book called Regulating the Poor, and that was basically a history of welfare. And what she basically talked about is how people need to get programs that benefit them to become self-supporting. And I found that when Democrats were in office, we did a good job. When Republicans were in office, we had a hard time. So anyway, I'd like to thank you all for being here and hope we have a very strong and uh, Democratic committee and we get out the vote in Brockton and have a good time to do it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to everyone showing up. Our heart is heavy today, being it's September 11th. And it was 15 years ago today that we, we had the tragedy happen, and, and it seems like yesterday. I can remember it was a beautiful sunny day, and we were all working on a campaign, and Steve Lynch was running for office, our congressman, he's done a tremendous job. And there was a debate of whether to allow the election to go on or not, but we can never let another enemy ever decide our fate. We have to decide it here in the United States of America, and I'm glad that they kept the election on because it's our freedom, and we have never forgotten our freedom. And, and thank you to our veterans and our first responders for all the work they've done. I, I served on the Committee on Public Safety. I was a vice chairman in the House side, and now I'm, I'm very fortunate that I'm on the Senate side. And, and as Steve mentioned, we lost a great friend and a great advocate on behalf of our community, Tom Kennedy. And our hearts are heavy as we remember Tom as well. But uh, I'm fortunate to serve on the Veterans Committee. And uh, I'm, I'm thankful to uh, Commander Doherty, who spoke earlier. We must never forget and we must never lose our faith in this country. This is a great country. And we deserve 
the freedoms that we have, and we, our forefathers have fought for our freedoms. So thank you to everybody for allowing us to have this day today. Um, but we're also here to honor a great friend, Paul Red Sullivan. Who's, who's been like an uncle to me. And, and Congressman Lynch was at the, the memorial ceremony he had at City Hall today. He wishes he could be here. He's a great friend to all of us. Uh, he had to go to Boston for some other occasions, but uh, he sends his regards. And um, Senator Elizabeth Warren sends her regards, and she has a citation that I'm going to read because she's also been a great friend to our community here in Brockton. So this is... The 114th Congress, the Honorable Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, recognizes Paul Red Sullivan on September 11, 2016. I am proud to join your friends, family, and the Brockton Democratic City Committee and thank you for your years of commitment to the Democratic Party. The leadership and tireless dedication you have demonstrated through your work in supporting both Democratic candidates and their causes is truly inspirational. Your commitment to the betterment of Brockton and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts has not gone unnoticed, and we all appreciate your hard work to improve the lives of others. Thank you once again. I wish you both the very best in all future endeavors, and it's signed by our United States Senator Elizabeth Warren. And we also have a citation from the State Senate. And this official citation hereby extends congratulations to Paul Red Sullivan in recognition of the 15th anniversary of your successful launching of the annual Gene Sullivan Memorial Breakfast. And it's signed by the President Stan Rosenberg and myself and the clerk. Thank you, Red. <laughs> and, and I would just like to thank all of you here today um, I would not be here without the support of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. As your senator, I'm very honored and privileged, and I'm also humbled because I had a lot of great senators to follow in their footsteps, and we could never replace Tom Kennedy, of course, and Bob Creedon, and Michael Creedon, and Anna Buckley, and we have a great history in the city here in Brockton. We have to remember it's so important, no matter who you're supporting, to get out and vote because they're looking at our numbers in Washington, and we have to keep the numbers up. In this primary, it was a difficult day. It was on a Thursday. But at 6 o'clock, we only had a 3.3% turnout for the vote in Brockton. And that's, that's uncalled for. We have to work hard. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here with everybody in this room. But we have to do a better job getting out to the rest of the public. We have some great candidates on the ballot. Jerry Cassidy has a Republican opponent. We have to get out and work for him. Now, whether the Republican is, is going to give him a hard time or not, it doesn't matter. We have to work diligently to get out the vote. Our county commissioners who are on the ballot, um, Greg Hanley, and uh, there's another gentleman out there. I, I can't, I don't know if he's here today. Is he? Lincoln. Lincoln. But we have to get out and vote. And these questions on the ballot, they're so important. We have a, the best school system in the Commonwealth. And, and I'm very honored. These kids are doing better than when I was in school. We had one student got accepted to five Ivy League schools this year. We have more Abigail Adams scholarships than ever before. In this ballot question about the charter schools would be detrimental to the city of Brockton, so please vote no on that question. Spread the word out. We've got to get the people out to vote. From the bottom of our heart, thank you. And again, it's a solemn day because we lost a lot of great people on September 11th, so God bless the city of Brockton. God bless the United States of America. I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here this morning, uh, especially on this solemn day. Uh, and we can't ever forget 9-11, the tragedy that happened. Uh, personally, I'll never forget 9-11. And uh, little did I realize that I was going to spend the next uh, better part of the next five years on active duty uh, being recalled back to the Marine Corps. Um, so that was a, a very significant portion of my life that followed immediately after 9-11. Uh, but we can never forget the people that perished on 9-11 and always hold them in our heart. Um, I'm, I don't need to come up here and sell a room full of Democrats. You've all heard the retired gunnery sergeant and marine speech. Um, but this is an important election. And to echo Mike Brady's comments, we need to get out the vote. And I know everybody in this room is going to get out and vote. But reach out to your friends. Reach out to your neighbors. 
get everybody out to vote. This is an important year. It's going to be a good Democrat year. But we have to do our due diligence and get everybody out to vote. And that's how I'm going to get elected, because my campaign is grassroots. You know, I don't, I don't have the money that my Republican challenger has. So I'm out there every day shaking hands, meeting new people. And I count on you to help me to reach out to your friends, to reach out to your family, and say, vote for Scott. And that's how I'm going to get elected, with your help. And I just want to thank you for that in advance. Thank you for being here. And now I'll turn it over to Greg. Well, there's some lawn signs out front for anybody that would like to take them. And if, and if you run out of them, i got plenty more. Thank you. See, that's why I went first, because I'm brief. Yeah. <laughs> when you're elected, you don't have to be brief. Last year, we got to sing Irish Eyes a Smile in for Red right over there. So we kind of broke from tradition. And I, too, folks, will wave my uh, elevator speech about my campaign. But I do want to talk a little bit about 9-11. Does everyone remember where they were on 9-11? I was sitting in the Quincy District Court with Arthur Tobin. Arthur Tobin is a clerk of courts in Quincy. He's a Korean combat, combat, uh, excuse me, Korean combat veteran uh, from the Marine Corps. He served distinctively as a senator, as a mayor, as a state representative, as a city councilor in the city of Quincy. And we were sitting together as that first plane flew into the Twin Towers. And we were shocked, as everyone was. And you could see his Irish getting up, and you could see the Marine Corps stiffen his back and his resolve to do something about it. And then the second plane came in, and he had to make that decision on whether or not to close the courthouse that day. And he didn't, for the same reasons that Senator Brady said about Congressman Lynch, saying that we needed to have Election Day go on, because we're Americans, and we're not going to let anyone upset our way of life. Having said that, <laughs> inspiration is what we can take out of 9-11. Folks like Scott Vecchi answered the call to combat to be inspired. I unfortunately couldn't serve in the military due to a rotator cuff injury. We won't go into that. But I went to a military college called Norwich University up in Vermont. And they espoused the theory of citizen soldiery. So I salute Scott for his service. But my service has always been community driven. It's about giving back. It's about making a difference. In the memory of all those folks that die, we should make a difference to build a better life, a better country, a better community. And all of us here today are making a difference by just being here on such a solemn day and showing who we are as Democrats. I thank you for your support in the past. I look forward to your support in the future and make a difference in everything you do. Thank you very much. How do I look? <laughs> Not bad for going on 83, huh? Uh, I want to uh, wish my, my friend here, a uh, son of the Brady, he went out of his way to make sure I got here. And he sent his, his, his aid Al, and I appreciate that very much. And for you people who came, I thank you. My wife was a great lady, and where I went, she went. Hold it closer. Go ahead. So I thank you very much. Bye-bye. The first time the uh, state delegation has ever met with the uh, uh, the, the committee here on the Democratic City Committee, it, uh, it was really nice. And, you know, we're planning on uh, raising some funds for the Democratic City Committee, the state delegation is. Um, I do want to make uh, one little note that uh, uh, Senator Brady ran on, you know, his name, uh, 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 being a football player and stuff like that. I think we should put him on suspension for four weeks. So, Mike, you, we'll see you in four weeks. We'll see you in Cleveland. Um, but uh, on this uh, somber occasion, the 9-11, uh, uh, you know, Archie and the, the local 144 has been very great to uh, this uh, city committee over the years. And we host our events down there at the, the uh, Union Hall. And uh, we, can't, we can't forget uh, something like that. Uh, I've been in office for six months, and uh, we've accomplished an awful lot. Uh, you know, my first vote was the opioid uh, vote. 
A um, uh, couple other uh, big issues, the, uh, the DA's office is moving uh, by, by November. We're going to have that downtown Brock. We have 25 new state, uh, state police are going to be traveling up and down Brockton, which is a great thing. Um, election day is going to be November 8th, as we know, and uh, we know Hillary is going to win this one. Um, so it's, it's just awesome working with uh, my colleagues, uh, uh, Representative Claire Cronin and uh, Rep. Uh, Michelle Dubois. Uh, I actually sit next to uh, Claire in the chamber, and it's, uh, it's, it's enlightening because her and I grew up together. So whatever Claire says, I always go with. <laughs> and of course, Senator Mike Brady, we, uh, we uh, love him very much. He's everywhere, and you know, he's my mentor. And, uh, and uh, this event here, we can't also forget it's the uh, Gene Studensky um, uh, Scholarship. You know, I've been coming to this uh, event for 30 years, and uh, Gene Sullivan, Gene Studensky, it's, uh, it's just an honor to be here, and uh, thank you, Steve, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Representative Cronin, would you like to say something? Claire, would you want to say something? Good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for your attendance here today. This year, probably more than ever, it's important that we remain unified as a party. Um, as we remembered September 11th this morning at Brockton City Hall, one of the themes that uh, we spoke about is the fact that on that horrible day so many years ago, 15 years ago, despite the horror of the day, the silver lining was the way in which our country became unified. We're not seeing that today in Congress, but I think at this time it's really important when we think of that message of unity to think of it when it comes time to voting in November. We are Democrats and we should stand together. So I ask all of you to stand together for the Democratic candidates in this race. As an aside, uh, our Brockton delegation is unified so strongly. We have Representative Dubois, Senator Brady, our newest and great addition, Jerry Cassidy. Uh, and the, and the beauty of this delegation is that we are unified and we are working together. We are working for our schools, we are working for our public safety, we are working every day uh, for funding for this city. Uh, just one more thing, Archie Gormley was here, I saw him earlier, from the professional firefighters of Mass. He's, he's a big wig in Boston with the firefighters, not just here in our city. So uh, on this special day, remember, to say thank you to our first responders, our police, our fire, and our EMTs. Thank you. I'm the South Coast organizer for the Save Our Public Schools campaign, and I'm out here today to talk to the de local Democratic City Committee about ballot question number two and why it's important to vote no to support our public education system and all of the teachers in Massachusetts. Basically, charter schools are trying to expand in Massachusetts, and if this bill were allowed to pass in just 10 years, we would have 120 new charter schools, and that would cost our public school system almost $1 billion. Now here in Brockton, they're handing out pink slips to teachers because they don't have the ability to afford to keep them on. So I think it's a little bit counterintuitive to take bricks out of one school to help build another when they have been proven, especially with the New Heights Charter School, to be unable to execute properly. And we're trying to get out uh, the information to everyone so that we can contact voters early and spread the correct information so that we can get out the vote. So question two is uh, a ballot question looking to raise the charter cap uh, on the, the cap on public charter schools. Uh, right now there are 33,000 kids um, stuck uh, in, in school on waiting lists for to get into public charter schools. Um, that they can't and they can't get in because of the cap. Uh, you know, what this question really is is about giving kids and parents choices, uh, allowing kids to go into environments where they might thrive better. Um, it's not a knock on the public schools at all, but some kids just um, could do better in different environments. That's really the long and short of it. Question three is the arm, arm, the farm animal containment question on the ballot and I am asking folks to vote no on three because it's going to raise the cost of certain foods here in Massachusetts that low-income families rely on and it's also not good for the animals that the question seeks to protect. 
It would be, the Cornell University has done a study, an impact study here in Massachusetts that estimates the cost to be nearly $300 million in a regressive food tax. And a similar measure passed in California shows that it raised the cost of eggs and still, since its implementation more than an, a year and a half ago, the cost of eggs in California are double, at least double what they are across the rest of the country. And I also had the opportunity to visit with a farmer recently whose family has been in business for over a hundred years selling direct to their customers. And he felt pressured to move to a cage-free system. And he noted that his mortality rate amongst his chickens went from 1% to 10 to 15%. So, and this is a result of, of hens suffocating each other, uh, displaying their natural cannibalism. Uh, and they, so they literally, uh, these hens eat each other and they also, uh, they eat the waste of other hens and the eggs that they lay actually sit in the waste. So if question three, I argue it's not good for people because it's going to raise the cost of food in a state where already too many families are deciding between whether or not they can afford to pay their rent or feed their children. It's not good for the animals. And so I just think the more that I can be out here educating folks on what the unintended consequences and these harmful impacts will be on both people and animals, I think that, that folks will agree that we all should be voting no on three. So a yes on three would mean that veal calves and mother pigs would need to be able to turn around and that laying egg laying hens would need to be able to extend their wings. Currently, these animals are crammed into cages so small that chickens cannot spread their wings and veal calves nor mother pigs can turn around or even stand up. These conditions cause drastically higher rates of foodborne illnesses such as salmonella, which is why we're endorsed by the Center for Food Safety and a, num a number of other, other health organizations. Uh, we are also endorsed by the MSPCA, the Sierra Club, and a number of animal cruelty and environmental organizations. The main concerns about this question are price, but a study by the United Egg Producers showed that the price of eggs will only go up by about one penny per egg. And so we would like to urge you to vote yes on three for animals, for food safety, and for the environment. Thank you. Uh, question four will uh, tax and regulate marijuana in Massachusetts for adult use for folks over the age of 21. Um, people should vote for it because there are over 800,000 people in Massachusetts right now who use marijuana on a regular basis. They're being forced in the, into the criminal market where they buy a uh, product that's untested and unregulated. We need to take that commerce away from the criminals and put it in a, a regulated market where folks um, can are, are asked for their IDs and the revenue generated will be able to be used for a whole panoply of, uh, of options. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's <laughs> life. Take time to be a dad today. I am gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. What this place needs is better graduation rates. What this place needs is less childhood obesity. What this place needs is free help with taxes. What this place needs is healthy breakfasts. What this place needs is fitness programs for kids. What this place needs is early readers. What this place needs is mentors for teens. What this place needs is people to join us. What this place needs is you. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org. It's not always easy being a dad. Do you have panda asthma too? Does that run in the family? This is the home of the most priceless kung fu artifacts. But when you make an effort. Dad, we're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, sorry. Go along, son. It's always worth it. Whoa, master! The smallest moments can have the biggest impact 
on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4DAD411 or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more.